and welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. Today we celebrate Easter Sunday. Our priest celebrant is Father David Gallardo, pastor here at the Cathedral. Before we begin our Mass, please take this moment to silence your cell phones and other electronic devices. Thank you. Our opening hymn is number 593. Jesus Christ is risen today. Please stand and sing hymn 593.
Good morning and happy Easter. And as we gather here around the table of the Lord, we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today truly is the day the Lord has made. We gather to celebrate the gift of new life, the gift of hope, the gift of God's love present in our midst. As we gather to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord this day, we especially thank the Lord for the gift of baptism. And so as we begin our celebration as a community of faith, as the body of the risen Lord present in the world today, we receive the life-saving waters of baptism upon us. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, to your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By this the Lord has been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. <coughs> On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with a burial cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospel just proclaimed, we heard how Mary of Magdala, Peter, and the disciple that Jesus loved made their way to the tomb of Jesus. They were eager to reach that tomb, thinking, believing in their hearts that they would find the body of Jesus. We, like those disciples, have made our way to this cathedral church from near and far away. Early on this first day of the week, also in search of Jesus. We have not made our way to a tomb, but rather to the house of God. The house of God where we encounter the risen Lord in spirit and we encounter the risen Lord in each and every one of us gathered here as disciples of the Lord Jesus. And today we are very joyful because we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. But we are also joyful because today we celebrate the gift of faith that each and every one of us has received. Last night in this cathedral church, we were happy to receive through the sacraments of initiation, baptism, Eucharist and Confirmation, seven new members of our faith community. And so at this time, I invite the newly baptized, if you would please stand, and we congratulate you and we welcome you once again to the community of our faith. Do you wanna turn around? Turn around. Each of the disciples that reached the tomb of Jesus saw something different. Mary Magdala went in the tomb expecting to see the body of Jesus, and yet he wasn't there. She assumed that someone had taken his body. And so she goes back to the other two disciples to let them know 
Jesus is not there. The disciple loved by Jesus doesn't go into the tomb, but rather waits until Peter enters. Peter enters the tomb. He does not see the body of Jesus, but he sees the burial cloths that had wrapped the body of Jesus. They were on the ground, and the particular piece of cloth that covered the face of Jesus was another part of the tomb. And finally, the disciple loved by Jesus enters. He does not see the body of Jesus, but we are told that he believes. He believes, but not as clearly as perhaps he would want to believe. What those three disciples saw in that empty tomb were signs that Jesus who had died was not present. Yet, they hadn't come to truly believe yet in the resurrection of Jesus. That would take time. They would need to process the events that they had witnessed the last three days of the earthly life of Jesus. They would need to process individually and collectively the many words that Jesus had spoken, the many miracles they had seen Jesus perform. And in time, they would come to believe in the words of Jesus, that he would never die and that the ones who profess faith in him would live forever. That is what we come to celebrate this day. Our faith in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. We come to celebrate that promise that God through Jesus has made to us that if we believe if we try to live our lives to the best of our ability, that death will have no power over us, and that one day we will also join the risen Lord in the kingdom forever. Today we come to the house of the Lord, not looking for a Jesus who is dead, but looking for a Jesus who is alive, alive in spirit, alive in each and every one of us, the baptized, the disciples of the Lord Jesus. And so as we hear the word of God this day, let us remember that as we heard in that first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, as Peter stood up, and proclaimed the person of Jesus, who Jesus was, what Jesus had done, what Jesus had said. If the risen Lord is to remain alive in the world today, it is through us. And that's why we ga gather every Sunday to be renewed in faith, to be renewed in the person of Jesus. And St. Paul made it very clear to the Colossians that because the risen Spirit of the Lord is already within us, within us, we need to look to things above, to think of things above, to think and to pray and to live our lives based on the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we do that, then we no longer come looking for Jesus who is dead, but we recognize Jesus alive, alive in the newly baptized, alive in each and every one of us, sons and daughters of God. And so as we heard in that first reading, St. Peter reminded the disciples that the Lord Jesus commissioned them 
to preach, to live the good news. As we continue the celebration of Easter today, as we gather with family and friends, let us share with them the good news. Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive in each and every one of us. Today, every day, let us share how the Lord is working through us, how Jesus keeps us alive in spirit, how Jesus continues to walk with us and leads us along the path of life so that one day, when our bodies are laid in our tomb, yes, the body may be laid to rest, but our spirit continues to live lives forever in the kingdom of heaven, lives forever in the presence and in the company of God and in Jesus, the risen Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty shows? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. By his resurrection, Christ has conquered all that stands between us and God. We therefore approach the Father now with great confidence. That all church leaders will be renewed in their mission of leading all people to Jesus, the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper unity among all Christians, as they acknowledge together and proclaim to the world the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the risen Christ may bless guide and protect all who serve in public office. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, who conquered the power of death, may give our society the strength to eliminate the evils of abortion, assisted suicide, and capital punishment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the sick may be comforted and healed, and that all who have died may share in the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you have already granted us more than we can ask for in the resurrection of Christ. As you answer our prayers, make us ever more faithful to him, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Very early in the morning after the Sabbath, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body with precious oils. The reward of his good and conscientious steward was to be among the first to know that Jesus had been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Please take a moment now to reflect on the blessings of this past week as we prepare our gifts. I now invite the ushers to pass the baskets and to receive your holy gifts.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you gave life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Viviana, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion hymn is number 592, Easter Alleluia, number 592.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Please be seated just for a moment. As pastor of the cathedral, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for being here today. There would be no Easter without the risen Lord or the risen Spirit of the Lord in each and every one of you gathered here today. I thank you especially because you are a reminder to me that Jesus is not dead. He's very much alive in each and every one of you. And please don't forget that. Please remember that the Lord is alive in you. I'd like to take this opportunity also to thank many who have helped us during the Paschal Triduum, sacristans, liturgy directors, altar servers, lectors, Eucharistic ministers, ushers, security. In a special way, we thank the incredible choir, our cathedral choir, for being with us again this day. Thank Father Juan, our associate pastor, Father Brian, who's in residence. Thank you for all your help and your ministry. And also very special thank you to our deacons who are with us, especially Deacon Gus, our cathedral deacon. And on behalf of Archbishop Gomez, we wish each and every one of you a very blessed Easter. Remember that when we celebrate in our church, we don't celebrate just for one day. We will celebrate Easter for 50 days. And so hopefully if you found yourself here today, you'll find yourself in the house of God next Sunday and the Sunday after next. So that that joy and that fullness of hope and peace that we feel today in our hearts continue to be there each and every day of our lives as disciples of Jesus. Here at the cathedral, we have a custom of always welcoming those who are with us for the first time. And so if this is your first visit with us at the cathedral, I invite you to please stand so we can welcome and acknowledge you. And my final announcement. Please, 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 as you leave the cathedral this morning, be patient. <laughs> Look around, over 3,000 people here. And so it may take a while to get out of the parking lot. But if we're patient and we're peaceful, we will experience another Easter miracle this day. <laughs> Just a reminder, as was announced last week, as you leave the parking structure today, you can only exit the Temple Street exit. Because as you're leaving, there's probably a long line on Hill Street of cars trying to get into the parking structure for our one o'clock mass. So again, happy Easter, and may God bless you, and please stand. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you this day and always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia.